What you see here is me having a really hard time removing this water filter from my faucet. I replace these every few months or so and once in a while they just really get jammed in there and they're almost impossible to remove. So of course, you know, I'm thinking there's got to be a 3D printed solution here. I just need something to give me a little more leverage here and, and allow me to get a more proper grip to be able to twist this thing off. Okay, so this is what I'm dealing with here. You can see you've got this triangular shape here that extends out. And uh, so it sits like this and then it's a little awkward grabbing it. You can't really get a you know a good a good grasp on there you're kind of holding it with like the tips of your fingers so with it being really tight I, I need something to you know maybe extend out more allow me to get like my full wrist action in there to turn it and remove it so I'm thinking design something that really snugly fits around this triangular part here and will allow me to actually be able to incorporate you know my full wrist muscle there to turn it and not just like a couple fingers um so so that's the idea if you look at it though they're not like straight triangles they're it's, it curves in so i'm thinking maybe some arcs all right let's jump into fusion now and i'll show you the approach i took on the design so first i started with the diameter of the filter i took my calipers and measured that and i got a uh, diameter of 70 millimeters so that's what we're going to start with okay let me pause here for a minute because i know you clearly see that that says 67 millimeters and not 70. Uh, honestly i don't know where i got the three extra millimeters from this is just a mistake somehow that i made um, but here's the thing when i actually did the fit test it pretty much fit perfectly um well almost perfectly and i'll show you why in a minute you can see here the reason i think this actually worked is that the end points here or the end of the triangles they don't really come to a point they have a width to them and i was going to need those uh three extra millimeters in order to compensate for that width so it ended up being a mistake that i actually needed so <laughs> explain that one i don't know but the part where the mistake is obvious is that you see that the arg here that curve it doesn't line up exactly uh, with the curve of the filter um, at the end of the day it actually worked and that's what i wanted so i wanted to point that out i can re-record this whole tutorial i'm about to show you um, but at the end of the day the techniques aren't going to change it's just the numbers that i would tweak i would just change the radius on that arc uh, we're just going to keep going here um, because the techniques are the same and that's what i want to show you i'll create a sketch on my xy plane and i'm going to grab my center diameter circle here start it at the center 70 millimeters there i have it all right we're going to take this select it and hit x to make it a construction line and then I want to come in with the uh, triangle there. Um, that's the part that you grab and turn to remove the filter. So to create that, I'm going to use the polygon tool. So we'll go ahead and go down to polygon, circumscribe polygon here. I'll also start that right at the center. Uh, click release, come out. And I'm going to right away tab and enter three sides here. And then bring this down a little bit so it fits in the circle i'll just click to place it and then i'll grab my horizontal constraint there and constrain that top line to make it horizontal and then i'm going to grab my coincident constraint and by definition uh, when you create these polygons all these sides are equal so if i um, click here on the edge and then click on the circle with again i, I selected that coincident constraint it's going to bring that edge out but because it has to maintain the rule that each of these sides have to be the same distance they all go out and will be coincident to this circle so okay now that i've got that i'll hit escape and then i'll double click on the triangle here and make that a construction line as well all right next i'm going to grab a line so i'll grab my line tool or just hit l here for a line i'm going to reference the midpoint here and go straight up and then you see a little x and i'm gonna click there and I'm gonna just come straight down, make sure that line is straight, and I'm gonna enter a uh, dimension here of 19.8. Now, the reason here I'm typing 19.8 is that I took my pair of calipers and I measured this distance on the filter, and it came to uh, 20 millimeters, but I wanna give myself a little clearance there. 
Um, so I'm giving myself 0.2 millimeter clearance, but I'm going to take that line, make it a construction line. And next I'm going to create an arc. So I'll go to create down to arc, three point arc. And I'm going to create an arc between this edge of that triangle and this other edge. And here's the reason I wanted that line. I want to snap right to it. So, okay, there we have it. Now, maybe I should explain it now. It'll probably make more sense. So when I um, measured the distance here, the inside of this arc from the outside of the circle there, that I measured at 20 millimeters. So I'm going to make it 19.8. So it comes out a little more to give me that gap um, or that clearance there. Okay, so now I can take this. Let's actually define it. I'll hit D um, for dimension here. And I'm just going to click and then hit enter just to define this radius there. And now, now you see it turned to black, so it's fully defined. We're going to now create a circular pattern of that arc. So I'll go down to circular pattern here, choose the arc. And for my center point, I'll just choose my center here, my origin. Uh, it'll default to three, which is exactly what I want. So I'll click OK. And there we have it. All right, and then um, what I'm going to do is take the edge of the triangle there and do an offset. And that's really that interior body that it's going to give me is what I want. So I'll go to modify down to offset. You'll have to click each one of these individually to select all three. And you can see if I drag this out, it's going to be a negative offset. So I'll just type negative 10 there and hit enter. And this is the profile here that I want. Now I don't want it to be so sharp here. So one option I can do is apply some fillets. And you do have to be careful here um, just to know that when you do uh, apply fillets to your drawing, you uh, may lose some constraints. But I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. I don't, I don't want this to be so sharp. So I'll do a fillet here. Um, it somehow went to 50. I only want like a five millimeter fillet. And you can see there. And then I'll do the same thing here. And then the bottom, I'm just um, simply selecting or clicking. Once you add one and you select the rest, it remembers what you entered here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter now and it'll apply it to all three. I'll right click and repeat fill it. And I'll also do this inside fill it. I'm going to do one millimeter on there. You can see this is turning blue, so I'm losing these constraints. Um, but then I can go ahead and select that interior part e4 extrude and then go up like 10 millimeters and there i have it i'll show you um so the other way if you don't want to lose those constraints let me go back to that sketch and go back to before i did those fillets um you know usually i actually avoid doing fillets in sketch mode um what i'll do is i'll complete the sketch and then i'll come here in the 3d space actually let's extrude this first uh, e4 extrude 10 millimeters and you can come in and do a uh, fill it here and then you know select your three sides here and I can do a five millimeter fillet there and then repeat that fillet and then I can also do the inside here so you can go that route as well one millimeter fillet but let's go back to that first option for a minute let me just undo these fillets and we'll go back to that sketch. Let's say you decided you wanted your fillets to be done here on your sketch. So um, let's go to apply them really quick here. And I'll just reapply these fillets. So five and then five here. Um, what you could do here is just a D for dimension and dimension the radius here. And you can see that'll just reapply those constraints. So you just have to come back and then add these constraints here. And that's giving you you can see the radius of this arc. All right, that's it for this tutorial. This is a quick one, but it, you know, it's one of those that was just very rewarding. I had a problem and then boom, jump into Fusion 360, was able to crank this design out in like two minutes and then 3D print this in under an hour. And it just got me exactly what I needed, just like this custom fit wrench for being able to open this. Uh, water filter that, that was really giving me a hard time. I mean, I was struggling trying to open that thing. Um, but now I have this and I can use it every time I need to remove a stubborn filter. So, all right, guys, any questions on the approach I took here, leave it in the comments. If you're one of my Patreon supporters, you'll have access to the Fusion 360 file here, which, uh, you know, you can play around with the design if you want. This is sort of a very custom thing, probably won't be useful to many of you unless you have this specific filter. But regardless, um, you know, if you want to play around with the 
design and you're a Patreon supporter, you'll have access to that. And if you're not, if you want to consider uh, becoming one, see the link below, a uh, great way to support my channel. And if you're looking to learn how to design for 3D printing, check out my quick start course link down below and my Fusion 360 Constraints Cheat Sheet. All right guys, I'll see you in a few.